Hi, thanks for taking a look at this introduction to Dayback. Um, I wanna show you kind of what we're looking at and then show you some of the capabilities that you'll have access to when you install Dayback in your org. So we're looking at Dayback Calendar here inside Salesforce and we're looking at one of the resource scheduling views. We're just looking at four days and we have three resources showing for each day. Um, these are just three people, they're in location one. A resource could be anything in your organization that needs to be rescheduled or that competes for resources, competes for time. So people, rooms, trucks, pieces of equipment, even business processes, anything that could be overscheduled. Um, and this grid is one of the ways we make sense of a complicated day. You could imagine that this four-day section, if looked in week view or in traditional month view, would be very complicated. It would be hard to know, for example, that Peter is free most of Thursday because there would just be a jumble of events. So what else do we see here? We see a bunch of events, and these are coming from a few different Salesforce objects. Um, events, tasks, and campaigns are native objects, and then installations is a custom object that we created. You can really show any um, records from any object in Salesforce that has dates and times or just dates to it. Um, you can show all those uh, inside Dayback. And you can also take a look at elements uh, from Google, or Office 365, or Google Sheets. Um, Dayback doesn't sync with those data sources, but it can let a user see those data sources in the same pane, in the same window as their Salesforce events, so that your folks only have one place to look for all their important events. Those Google or Office records may be their personal calendars, or they may be the availability calendars of people um, that are working for you who've shared their availability with you. Or they're just public Google calendars you need to keep track of, like holidays in the United States or company picnics, that kind of thing. So um, when we're looking at the events, you can see we have a lot of control over what color is there, what icons are there, are there tool tips showing, what fields are we pulling in from the event itself, from, uh, from the record. Um, and of course, we can edit an event. I can drag it to reschedule this to change that conflict. I can click undo here. And when we do that, we're editing that Salesforce record. Dayback doesn't have a database of its own. It doesn't have a mirror copy of all these records. It's literally querying uh, your Salesforce organization, finding these records. And when you move one here, it's as if you edited the record on that Salesforce page and any actions that you had on that record, any flows, any validation, that would all fire and bubble up into Dayback. So if for some reason I wasn't able to move this because of my permissions, I would have seen an error here and it, the event would have snapped back. So um, I think the takeaway there is Dayback is not a copy of your Salesforce organization. It's another view into your Salesforce organization. So let's click on an event and see what we can do here. We have a number of fields that you can configure, whether you want to show some of these or all of these. You can see uh, a location, who the event's assigned to. You can pick from those folks. We can pick a status. These statuses and uh, um, resources, what I've labeled assigned to here, are really coming from your Salesforce org. So if this is a multi-select pick list, these are the pick list values you've defined in your record. And then we could link it to a contact or a lead, maybe to an account or some other record. And then you can even add custom fields. Um, they may be themselves, maybe pick lists. They, oops, excuse me, they may be um, you know numeric fields that you want to chart. Um, dates, that you, other dates that you want to keep track of. But you have a lot of options about what you can add here, what fields you can add, and then you can take action right from the event. So I can click on a button to do something. Maybe I just want to go to that record in Salesforce, just go to that records page. Maybe I want to start a Zoom meeting. These buttons are um, up to you, and they can be very simple, like go to an event, or very complicated, like create a Zoom meeting and keep it in sync as you um, reschedule the record in Salesforce. So a lot of options there in terms of what you see and in terms of what you can do with the event. Dayback was designed so that you could take action right from the calendar. It's not just a picture of your schedule, it's a place where you can work and, um, and arrange your schedule. Um, so speaking of that, I'm gonna use a bookmark here to look at some different data. So what's, what we're looking at here is constrained both by our view, we're on the resource schedule view, and by our filters. We've asked to take a look at just location one and then which calendars. So when I switch bookmarks, it's gonna reset all that. It's gonna pick some different objects. I think we're just looking at trucks here. This is a different set of resources. We're just looking at the installation object and it switched views over to the horizon view. So now I'm looking at installations for all of these trucks over about four weeks. And you can see that this is another um, feature of Dayback, this chart at the bottom, we call this analytics. 
You can get to it by clicking on this button right here and it will chart your values over time. So I'll click on the gear here to see, we're just currently looking at the net invoice, we're counting the net invoice for each of these records. And the net invoice is one of those, move this, is one of those custom fields. So I'll click on custom fields, there's the net invoice right there. So Dayback can chart any field in your object. So in this case, we just wanna see how are we doing against our threshold, our goal of $5,000 a day. And you can see we're doing pretty well. We're over our goal, which is great. I'm gonna switch the view a little bit here. I'm gonna break this out by status. And now we can see we get one line for each status. Uh, the green things are planned, so that's good. The orange stuff has been deferred or kind of canceled, so we're not gonna get that money. And $30,000 of this is still needs to be qualified. So by breaking it out by status, we can see that while it looked like we were ahead of our goal for the next four weeks, this last week actually all that revenue, or almost all of that revenue, is still at stake. We have a lot of um, records that are in the qualification state that we need to move forward into plan. So these charts can be a nice way to break out your revenue, your goals by resource or by status. We use this kind of thing to see if we're overextending ourselves, right? So have we overcommitted? Other companies use this to see if they're meeting their targets. Um, a lot of options for analytics. And again, you're probably configuring Dayback with some filters and some views, and you don't have to teach everybody in your org how to use all these filters and views. When you find something that works for you, you can bookmark it, which means you can save that, and then one click, you can see we'll snap back to that other scenario that I thought was useful. So you're probably bookmarking two or three stories inside your organization that you're keeping track of. Your capacity, uh, looking forward in your capacity, and then maybe looking back at your revenue. Um, and you'll quickly check in with those bookmarks over the course of the day to make sure that your schedule is reflecting what you want to be doing. A um, Couple other things to look at here. We'll, we'll talk more about configuration later, but there's another option here. You know, we, when we clicked on this event, we, we call this the popover. So you can see some simple fields and add some custom fields. But you may have a pretty complicated organization and you need more fields to show up there than you can see right there. And there's, there's an, another option here. So I'm just gonna click on this gear, go into the event, and I'm gonna create an action. So these are the triggers that can trigger an action. So in addition to changing the way that Dayback looks, it's very easy to change the way it behaves. There are a lot of triggers here that you can take over and say, hey, when we do something, like before we save an event, or when I hover over an event, I wanna run some custom JavaScript. I wanna do something special. That's how we do that tool tip that you saw that looked at the event in all those different time zones. And when I turn this on, you'll see it does something pretty cool here. So we'll go back. So now when I click on an event, it's gonna behave differently. Instead of bringing up that popover, when I click on it, it's gonna bring up the record in your own Salesforce page. This is called a lightning modal. This is kind of the, the native page that you can design. And if you have a ton of fields or a lot of your fields have built in validation or uh, you have a lot of required fields, it may be more interesting or more useful to edit your records in this view than in our popover, than in Dayback's popover. So you can do both of those things. You can click on an event, and I think this is a task. Nope, that's also an event. Maybe this one's a task. Yep, so this is a task. This is a different object that I didn't configure to use its lightning modal. So sometimes you can use the popover, and then other times you can use the lightning modal. And then, you know, it really is uh, tied into Salesforce very tightly. So, you know, if I want to jump over to this contact or this account, I can just click these blue buttons and I'll jump right to those records. Um, so you don't necessarily have to use the modal if you, if you just because you want to tie into your, your contact or your account. I'm just going to click here. You're still one click away from coming over to that account. So let's go back. So I think next I want to take a look at some of the different views that you can use to make sense of your day because this kind of schedule view makes a lot of sense if you're doing very time sensitive things like I, I need to see, hey, when do I have an hour free in the afternoon? This is a great view for looking at that. In fact, you can even turn on Dayback's availability and say, well, I have a lot of time kind of open in the middle of the day, but that's because it's lunch. <laughs> um, and I, you know, oh, and this one record is blocked off. Um, you know, Peter has blocked off some personal time. So you can even use availability scheduling. These records are coming from the uh, Lightning Scheduler in Salesforce to block off your time. But this view is great for seeing when could I do something in the morning. But you may be doing a different kind of scheduling. You may be scheduling in whole days. 
And there's some other views in Dayback that are more useful for that. So we'll take a look at those next. So we've spent some time looking at the resource schedule view and looked briefly at horizon view. Let's take a look at some of the other views available in Dayback. Um, so many views have both a schedule and a list version. The schedule version is gonna try and show an event at the time it's occurring. So all the events are at the top and then timed events are shown during the day. So you can see when your gaps are. If that's not interesting to you or you don't have timed events, then the list views will just kind of show everything in a, in a list. Same thing with the week view. Here's a week view plotted by, by time, and here's a week view plotted by the list. And again, these views can get very crowded unless you're breaking things up. So you might wanna to filter them to say, for instance, take a look at just the things that are not started, or use the text filters you know, to further filter something close. Right. Um, so month view doesn't have any time options. Um, it's just showing all the events here. There, there is a compression setting that um, some folks use. So you can see that some of these events are quite tall because they have a lot of text in them. If we turn the compression on, then each event will just take up a single line, um, which can be nicer if you want to get an overview of what's happening, but you definitely would need to click into the event to read it or add the event's description to the tooltip. So I'm going to turn compression off because that's generally how I use it. Um, we looked at Horizon View briefly. Horizon View is kind of like a Gantt chart, although it can use very long time ranges. Um, it's designed to support um, multi-generational projects and long-term thinking, so it definitely um, can extend out quite far. And it also probably makes more sense when broken out by resource or in a highly filtered state, like viewing just one project at a time or one department at a time. But it's a great way to get an overview of what's happening at long time scales and you know, it supports filtering, so I can even in this state drag things from one resource to another. So if I don't think Beth's gonna be able to accomplish this or finish it on time, I can move it down to James and then undo that. Um, I can reschedule things, like say this landing page project is gonna take a little bit more time. Oh, this is great. So we, we talked earlier about how um, any validation or errors that would occur if you edited something in the native Salesforce page will bubble up. This is one of those, that's a task. I haven't math, tasks don't have end dates, so that's not gonna do much for me. Let's see, is this one a task? This is an event, right? So this one I'll be able to drag a little bit longer and then you know move things around. So it's very easy to move things around and then undo them if you have made a mistake. Um, so that's Horizon View. It can break out by both status and resource. And again, those are things that you can map to any field in your organization. Status is the thing we color code by, and resource is the thing that becomes columns on the resource schedule view. So this is the view that we started looking at. A lot of folks use this when they're doing time-based scheduling to scan for gaps. The, the parallel views here that help you scan for gaps are things like daily, that'll look at your resources as columns with a whole month uh, down the left-hand side, and then these pivot views, so uh, like pivot list, that will show the days across the top and then your resources down the side. This is one of those views where, piv uh, where pivoting, excuse me, where compression tends to make sense. So if I turn compression on, now I can just see blocks representing my individual events and it's very easy for me to scan for openings. So if I'm uh, renting equipment by the day, um, like uh, renting buses or um, uh, tractor trailers or power equipment, this is a great view to see, hey, when is a given piece of equipment free? So those are the, the overall views here. Again, some of these views can get pretty crowded. You can close the sidebar to make a little more room. And, um, and if you have a lot of resources, so let's just turn off this resource filter. You know, we can see up to five resources. So I'll page through them here or this little drop down here that says, hey, let's look at six resources at a time and just 14 days. So you can configure this to see the kind of thing you're looking for. And then again, bookmark that view so that you don't have to be fiddling with all these little switches and your users can just kind of quickly jump to these bookmarks in order to make sense of their schedule. We've talked a lot about the resource views where resources are columns in this case and can be you know many columns, right? Uh, lots of columns if I have a bigger monitor or uh, resources become rows. But what is a resource really and how do we create them? So they, they show up in the left-hand side of the sidebar over here. And a resource is really anything in your organization that can be overscheduled. So anything where you could assign an event to one thing, one person, room, piece of equipment, or another, anything when there can be conflicts, just like we can see here that Beth is double booked right here, and we need to assign this to Peter. So 
for many organizations, they'll just create their resources by hand like this. So I'll create a new resource for Tim, um, Tim Smith, and I'll put Tim in a folder um, called location one and give him a short name. Um, Dayback uses the short name like this when those columns get very narrow and I couldn't spell out the whole person's name. So great, uh, Tim's there. And if I add him here and then change the number of resources shown, We'll now see that we have an extra column for Tim, uh, which is great. And I can turn Tim off and it goes away, bring Tim back. So many folks will create their resources by hand. And this can be handy because you're often putting the resources into more than one folder. You may organize your resources by location, like we have here. You may also organize them by skill. So the whole point is to have enough folders or enough resource categories so that you're never looking across 20, 40, 400 resources at a time. You're looking at some narrow subset of your resources for just the folks or the pieces of equipment that pertain to a particular problem you're trying to solve. So I'm going to have a lot of folders here, breaking out my people by their reporting hierarchy, by their location, and by their skill set. Um, and again, we make folders the same way. We just click this new folder button and make new folders. In some orgs, you have way too many people to do this. In fact, when you first install Dayback, it'll try and make um, a folder for all your users and put all or at least your first hundred or so users in there. But if you have that many people, you're not going to want to be creating them by hand. And Dayback has an actions layer that can create these resources and these folders based on SQL queries. So based on queries of your Salesforce org. We have a lot of examples of that. And it's a pretty common thing for people to create folders based on their reporting hierarchy or based on profiles um, or even some companies have these resources be pieces of equipment and they query their Salesforce org to show just the pieces of equipment that are not currently in maintenance. So every time somebody logs in, the resource list may be slightly different. So you have a lot of options to make the resource list dynamic. Statuses are very similar. Most users just create them by hand, create a new status, give it a color, put the status in a folder. And again, like with resources, you can select statuses by selecting the whole folder. Just click here, it selects the whole folder. We only have one item, one vacation item here, and then turn the whole folder off. Statuses are generally used for something temporal. You can see here it's kind of like not started, begun. And while many organizations, if they're using Excel, will color code based on resource, like color code on their people, you don't really need to color code by people in Dayback because the columns make it so obvious which resources are which. That kind of leaves the color to be used for something else like the status of a job or the status of the customer or the type of work. Um, so those are the two big filters that are happening in, in Dayback, resources and statuses. And then again, there's this text filter up here that can be used to, to do all kinds of things. So a simple version of it is just to look for keywords or customer names, but it supports a very rich grammar. I'm gonna click this help button here. You'll see these little question marks throughout the application and they take you to our documentation and show you what's going on. So you can see even in the screenshot, you can do ors or ands, but this filter actually supports a ton of operators and you can do very complicated things here like proposed value, right? So you can make very rich filters. And again, you don't have to type them every time. Once you get a filter that captures exactly what you're looking for, you can create a bookmark for that, right? Bookmark that right here. And then either make that bookmark private to you share it with your whole group, or even make that bookmark public. Um, we'll talk about those uh, in a little bit. You can make public bookmarks that essentially export this data, if you want to turn that feature on, so that somebody who's not in your Salesforce org could get a read-only URL for exactly what you're looking at. That's uh, what a public bookmark does. So now you know how to color code events by status. You can also add your own kind of additional colors or um, icons using uh, CSS. So Dayback is a, um, a Canvas application, so this is all kind of done in, in uh, JavaScript and uh, HTML, which means that you have complete control over the appearance here with CSS. You can change the fonts, you can change the formatting, you can change the colors, and you can use CSS to remove buttons, tabs, features, labels, anything that you don't want your users to see. So some of our customers have fairly stripped down versions of the calendar that just show a couple of tabs and have hidden everything else. And the CSS control in Dayback lets you do that. But let's take a look at this one particular CSS example just to show you how we got this icon here. Because I think it's a good example of the kind of things that a Salesforce admin has access to inside Dayback. 
So to get at that icon, I'm gonna go over to the calendar and I'm gonna click on the gear next to that object. That's from the event object. This is the behind the scenes part of Dayback. You can turn on different calendar sources. You can make some general settings around what, you know, what kind of views are available. Do we show the sidebar? What day of the week do we start on? But let's get back to that icon. So over in field mapping, you can see that the display has both a few real fields from your Salesforce object, you know, the, the related project, the location, the related contact or lead, but it's also got this CSS around it. And that's what's cool about the display is that you can assign classes to this display, to individual fields within it. And those classes can be based on field values, which is a fancy way of saying that you can have the class of the event based on a field in the event. Once you've done that, you can come over to Dayback's CSS. This is how we, we format that tooltip to look pretty. You can scroll down here and find things like, these are weather icons, an urgent icon, an icon when you can't move an event. And this is basically saying, hey, if the, if the class is named this, then this is what we wanna do. We wanna put a red icon here and make it a certain size. And just you just have lots of, uh, of options for customizing that. Um, let me go back to settings real quick. Um, I think the other thing that's interesting, it may not be obvious, let's go back to our Salesforce event, is that you can of course also turn off individual fields, right? Just turn off this name here and you can relabel things. So we really wanted to make a calendar that was very easy to customize, um, both changing the way things look and changing the, the language. So even though you may be using Dayback in English or French or in one particular language, and the fact that you can switch between languages may not be that interesting, a lot of people are still using the translation layer to change the words here into their business vocabulary. So you may not call things resources, you may call them business units. You may not call statuses statuses, you may call them work types. And so there's a whole translation layer here, pretty much anything you can see in Dayback, you can translate into your own business vocabulary. So if all that sounds good and you wanna explore Dayback a little further, um, what, what do you do? Well, the first thing to do is just install a trial into your org. You can do that right from App Exchange. Find the, just search for Dayback in App Exchange. You'll see a Get It Now button. And you can install Dayback into your production org or into a sandbox. And Dayback will configure these three objects for you by default your events, tasks, and campaigns. And even if you're not using events, it's great to have the event object in here as an example that you can use for your own custom object field mapping. So you can see how we kind of did this. You can see all the um, uh, all the fields we've mapped. Kind of, oh, I forget, you know, they talked about making the resource the owner of the event, but I, I don't remember how they did that. So it's just a great example source so that you can use that for making your own custom sources. So it does all that by default. And if you are using events, then you'll be able to see your events in here right away. The next thing you probably want to do is take a look at the resources and statuses. You know, we create some very simple statuses like not started, busy. That may not apply to your work. And then Dayback will create um, resources for all of your users. If your resources are people like salespeople or field service folks that are doing installs, that's great. But you'll probably want to put those users into folders that make sense for you. Um, and again, you just create that new folder by hand and then click on gear here and put somebody in a folder. Um, down the road, you may even want to automate that. We talked about these actions that can create these folders and resource records for you based on SQL queries. Dayback has some great examples of that. Just click this little checkbox. Um, sorry, click this little uh, question mark icon. Or you can hire us to make more elaborate actions if you want to you know, really do interesting things like only bring in the people that are in the same time zone as the user who logged in and omit folks that are on vacation and, you know, whatever else you might want to do. Um, so that's what I would recommend for next steps. Install the application, configure your resources, take a quick look at your statuses, and then you should be able to see your events in here in all these different views. Take a look at horizon view, see if something like this kind of long time scale view where you're charting a field from your records makes sense for you, then get in touch if you have questions because we're definitely here to help. Thanks a lot for taking a look at this quick tour and I hope Dayback can make a big difference for you.